Presbyopia will affect nearly every person over the age of 45. It is expected that by the year 2020, 2.1 billion people worldwide will be presbyopic, making it more important to find a reliable solution to this growing condition. Presbyopia is caused by a loss of elasticity of the crystalline lens. As a result, words and near objects appear blurry and out of focus. Several technologies have tried to overcome the challenge of presbyopia. However, they all involve visual compromises. A new solution based on small aperture optics is proving to simulate natural vision, provide a broad depth of focus, and reduce dependence on reading glasses. The camera inlay, created by AccuFocus, is made of polyvinylidene fluoride and measures 3.8 millimeters in diameter with a 1.6 millimeter central aperture. The inlay is only five microns thick, which is equivalent to one fourth the thickness of a human hair. The opaque periphery of the inlay is laser etched with 8,400 micro perforations of varying sizes. These perforations optimize nutrient flow without compromising optical quality. With normal vision, the eye's natural lens focuses images near and far onto the retina. In a presbyopic eye, the lens cannot focus light onto the retina, resulting in an increased blur circle and reduced image quality. The inlay acts just like the aperture in an f-stop camera by applying the depth of focus principle. By only allowing central light rays through its fixed 1.6 millimeter aperture, objects that were once blurry come into focus. The patient's near and intermediate vision is restored while maintaining distance vision. The first steps in a camera sim LASIK procedure are identical to a standard LASIK procedure. As with LASIK, a flap is created using a femtosecond laser and the side cut incision is unzipped using a Sinsky hook. With this particular patient, the side cut is opened at five o'clock and seven o'clock. Dissection of the flap can be completed using a LASIK cannula or spatula, such as the Slade or Seibel. Next, the flap is folded back and tacoed using a cannula or spatula. The eye tracker is then engaged and the programmed eczema treatment completed. The flap interface is then rinsed, irrigated, and replaced using the LASIK cannula. Now that the LASIK procedure is complete, the flap is relifted for inlay placement using sterile surgical forceps. The leading edge of the inlay is placed on the stromal bed. The forceps jaws are opened and then slowly withdrawn. Once the inlay is adjusted into proper position and centration is adequate, the stromal bed is carefully inspected for any debris. Three drops of BSS are placed at the hinge and the flap is replaced in a dry and purposeful manner to ensure proper alignment. Finally, the flap is smoothed into position, centration is re-evaluated, and perioperative drops administered. One of the most important factors for success with a corneal inlay is centration. Early analysis shows that placing the inlay within 100 microns of the first Purkinje image results in the best possible near and distance acuity. The primary method for centration to date has been use of a direct ophthalmoscope and a laser fixation light. Though acceptable centration with these methods is obtainable, it involves considerable speculation on the part of the surgeon. For this reason, the AccuTarget system was developed to reduce potential error and make centration within the desired placement zone more reliable. The AccuTarget system combines preoperative ocular diagnostic information with real-time intraoperative surgical tracking and guidance. At the pre-op exam, the diagnostic unit identifies the patient's pupil centroid and first Purkinje image and recommends the optimal inlay placement location. 
This information is transferred to the surgical guidance unit, which combines real-time eye tracking, scleral vessel recognition, and an inlay placement image overlay to assist the surgeon with proper inlay placement. Shinagawa LASIK Center in Japan is treating myopes, hyperopes, and emetropes with SIM LASIK. As of December 2010, over 1,500 patients have been treated. 627 of those are out to three months, and 80 are out to a year. Monocular vision in the camera eye for both groups on average is 20-20 at distance, and J2 for near at 30 centimeters, which roughly translates to J1 at 40 centimeters. In a recent satisfaction survey, 93% of patients can perform everyday near tasks without reading glasses. As life expectancy and visual demands for the aging global population expand, the need for a predictable solution for presbyopia has become more pressing. Small aperture inlay technology can be a great solution for reviving near vision, maintaining distance, and reducing dependence on glasses for everyday activities.